um, when you are going up against a Connor McDavid, what is the key to shutting him down? And is it similar to shutting down Nathan McKinnon like you guys have seen before? Um, yeah, I mean, I think it's pretty pretty similar. He's, um, of course, great player, um, really fast, skilled guy. But, you know, just try to try to take away time and space from him and um, and stay close all the time. Don't, uh, you know, if he's he's got too much open eyes, he's going to gonna make you pay but yeah I mean stay close and take away time of, uh, time and space I think that's the, that's the key stay in the front left Miro I think you're averaging 28 minutes so a do you love playing a lot and then B have you learned over the years just how to be efficient right the way you play you're you're a smart player just if you just learn how to just manage your energy and and play well that amount of time oh uh, yeah I love to love to play a lot it's uh it's fun being on the ice and and play and yeah I mean just try to try to be uh, try to be smart it's uh you know it's a lot of minutes but you know if you can can manage it well and uh you know be smart with it it's it's fine and yeah feeling really good and uh like I said love to play play a lot third row on the right hey Jamie uh what has been built hey over here it's me what has been built over the past, you know, five years, basically, of going to the final, going to the conference final? Just seems like you guys have built this toughness that is helping you this year. Yeah, I feel like, uh, <clears throat> you know, we built a culture here that you know, everybody that, that comes onto this team is uh, welcomed with open arms and, um, you know, we're here to compete every day and, and you know, win hockey games and put ourselves in situations like this where we have an opportunity and um, obviously made some, some big additions last summer and, and bringing guys in and, and at the trade deadline. So uh, we feel like, um, you know, we're, we're a confident group. We're a deep team and, um, you know, now it's on us to to do something with that. But, um, you know, we're going up against a great opponent that's, that's very dangerous and um, we're going to have to play our best hockey. Second row on the left. J Jamie, when you talk about that depth, there's also a lot of really, really good players on this team. And I wonder how you build a culture in which everyone kind of feels like they've got a piece of it. Because that's the language that I hear from everyone. That's what I see from you guys on the ice. How do you make sure that everyone is pulling on the rope equally? Well, I think it starts right from, from day one. Um, you know, that was kind of the message around training camp. Um, you know, is that everyone's got a, a hand on the rope and, um, you know, if one guy's not pulling on it, then, um, you know, you're weaker as a group. So guys have uh, checked egos, um, you know, really brought in, bought in right from day one. And um, I think that's why we're we're sitting here today in a good position to, to make something happen. We'll go uh, front right. Hey, Jamie, sticking with culture, uh, what has stuck out to you about the culture Pete DeBoer has come in here and built? And for you personally as the captain, what has that connection with him meant to you? Um, you know, Pete's laid down, um, you know, right from day one. And, and the first few chats that I had with him when he got hired was, um, you know, we're going to do it as a group. Um, you know, it's from top to bottom and... Um, you know, starts with 200 feet hockey. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be the same guys every night. And I think that's the best part about this team is that we're built that way that, um, you know, guys are stepping up in, in different scenarios, different opportunities, guys coming in and out of the lineup. And, um, you know, he sets out a great game plan for us to, to execute. And, um, you know, no matter who's in the lineup, guys are coming in and doing their jobs. Front row on the left. Jamie, just wanted to ask you about Wyatt Johnson and um, a kid that didn't play in the pandemic year at all in junior, then gets drafted. Just what stood out about his journey? It's a, more of a unique path to, to get to this point. Yeah, very, uh, very unique. Um, I think probably started with his draft year. I don't know how many games he played that year, but yeah, pretty crazy draft. I think, um, you know, for every NHL team going into it, they weren't really sure. Um, but apparently our guys were sure about that pick. Um, you know, he's he's stepped in right from day one. Um, an impressive, intelligent hockey player, great person. And, um, 
you know, he's a sponge. He, he, he learns um, probably from one of the best, obviously, living at Joe's house. Um, you know, he's open to all new ideas and, and just wants to get better. And um, and he's definitely done that and, and taken a, an even bigger step this year um, in his sophomore year. Uh, there was no slump. Um, you know, he was dialed right from day one. And, and he, I, I think that's just Johnny. He wants to be uh, one of the best, and um, he's proven it here. We'll take a couple more. Third row on the right. Hey, Mero. Uh, what have you seen from Chris Tanev, and how much has he helped the group as a defenseman? Uh, yeah, he's been, I think he's been huge. It's a great addition for sure, and just uh, how he defends and on um, you know blocking shots and plays hard it's it's unreal he's really good at it and of course i think he's um uh, making great plays too with the with the puck he got some poise and <clears throat> you know great breakout passes and yeah i mean he's uh he's been great great for us second row on the left is that me yeah jamie uh the guys on the other side you know they've been to a couple of western finals they think that it's their time to win they want to win a cup of course uh, you've played 1,100 games. Uh, Suter's played like 1,500 games. Can can anyone want to win a more uh, win a cup more than a guy that's played as much as yourself and Suter and Pavelski, who haven't won one yet? Uh, that's a great question. Um, you know, everybody wants to win. Um, everybody plays this game to win a Stanley Cup. Um, you know, we got more than a few guys here with over uh, a thousand games that, that haven't done that yet. And, um, you know, obviously uh, that's our motivation. Um, obviously they want to win, but so do we. And, um, you know, that's what's going to be great about this series is um, we'll find out who wants it more. Front row on the left. And just following up on that, Miro, how much of a rallying cry is it for, for the room for to get guys like Ryan and Pavelski and guy beside you and, and Matt? You know, they played so many games to get them over the top. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, obviously it's um, it's great to play with these guys. You know, they have been in the league for, for a really long time and um, at the highest level. So it's uh, great to play with them. And, of course, you want 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 to win for them too it's um i think they deserve it and uh, hopefully we can we can do that for them we'll take one more front row on the left jamie i was going to ask you obviously the first time the stars and the mavericks both got this far in the same year you go to a mavs game and they're doing stars at the anthem you go to a rangers game they're doing the same thing what does it mean when you see the city come together i know you don't always hear, hear that but what does it mean when all that's happening and so many good vibes at the aac right now yeah it's awesome um you know, I think probably um, both franchises probably, uh, you know, got some motivation from the Rangers as well. Um, you know, they started this thing uh, last October, and um, obviously the city's buzzing. Um, we're happy to, um, you know, watch the, the Mavs uh, go on and do so well, and um, and we're supporting them as they're, they're supporting us. Um, you know, it's a great time to... To be a sports fan here in, in Dallas and um, you know hopefully uh, good things uh, keep coming here thanks a lot guys hey Ryan how are you uh, I think Joe's been this is his seventh conference final this is your second now in two years Just what's it mean to you after all the time that you put in in this league to have this opportunity yeah it's uh, it's pretty special um, it took me a long time to get to it last year and now to have the chance to go back and and hopefully uh, you know do a little better than last year um, is is awesome. Uh, you, you don't get these chances. You don't get teams like this, and it's a lot of fun to be a part of. Is there I don't know, what word? How would you describe it? Like obviously, there's four guys who've played over a thousand games, looking for the cup for the first time. Is there a, something in common? A shared mission? Like how would you describe it? Well, I, I can't speak for Joe, but for myself, it's, um, it's the only reason I'm playing. Um, you know, my kids are at the age now where I want to spend more time with them and, and be a part of uh, what, what they're doing, um, whether it's hockey or other sports or school or whatever. Um, 
but for me, it's that's the reason I'm playing. Um, you hear you hear so many good stories, um, and, and it's not going to define your career. I, I think if if you don't, I, I, I think it uh, obviously would suck, but I don't think it defines you. you you as a player. Um, but I mean, that's that's why that's why I'm playing. It's go out there and, and compete and there's there's no greater feeling than going on the ice and and having that in-game battle and um, you know everyone l leaves it all out there and lays it all on the line front row on the right for either of you guys Pete was speaking the other day about how he thinks Edmonton has a lot of similarities to Vegas and Colorado do you see those similarities as well and do you think your road has prepared you for Edmonton yeah there's definitely a you know with those teams, there's some big time players that we've seen, you know, the McKinnons and McCars and Eichels. Um, and some things they do as far as rush, you know, we looked at their great rush team, um, you know, like we saw in these other teams. Um, so there, there's different aspects of that, of those teams that you will definitely see, you know, this time of the year. And, and Edmonton's no different. Um, you know, they, they do some of those things at elite, elite, elite levels. And, you know, so it'll, our game plan can't really change. You know, we we're going to have to be well in certain areas and that'll help us up. Second roll on the left. To that point, Joe, um, what makes this team so well prepared to, to handle a team like Edmonton if they're similar to the likes of Colorado and Vegas? Um, I think just how we've built, built this team throughout the year and our structure, you know, we've talked about it. Uh, the staff, I think the players haven't shied away from, you know, what our goal is. You know, coming down the end of the year, it was we wanted to create Stanley Cup habits, do some of the things the right way. You know, we're going to get some good teams. And just the way the Central was set up and, you know, and, and the West, like it's, it's just part of the way. So you, you do that and guys have bought in and, and played really well. And, um, you know, these series, that Vegas series was tight. You know, both ways, there wasn't much room. Colorado, same thing. Um, but guys have done a tremendous job, I think, you know, kind of committing to those areas. Ryan, you talked about the joy you kind of take away from the battle that's, you know, happening at this time of year. I wonder what that battle is like against the likes of Dreisaitl and McDavid. Yeah, obviously they're two world-class players. Um, it's going to be tough on us. Um, I think why we've been successful this season is because everybody has bought in. Um, everyone plays the right way um, defensively and then you know, everyone's been contributing offensively. So, yeah, the, the battle, um, five guys on the ice having that goal of defending. Front row on the right. Hey, guys, Jeff Cole with Fox Dallas. For both of you, uh, you know, this team's been through plenty of adversity in the playoffs already. Uh, how would you describe the co-leadership of this team with Jamie Benn and, and Pete DeBoer? And is there an example of a time when their leadership has really led this team through one of those tough moments? You know, I just think adversity it's it's going to come it's going to show up you know regular season a little bit for sure and then playoffs it just happens you know if you get deep into a, a round there's going to be times where it, it shows itself and guys have done good um leadership wise i think the biggest thing is you guys spoke earlier about you know some of the veterans on this team and games played and we're trying to get here together it's you know right from those guys down to the young guys we've guys just step up and we got a you know a complete team a deep team and you get through that as a group at the end of the day it's it's really how it happens and we've had some guys step up make some big plays front row on the left Ryan you actually answered my question a minute ago so I'll ask a different one a lot of good vibes going on with the teams that play in the AAC with the Mavericks also in the West final what does it mean when you have so much success and I know I don't know I know you guys don't hear it but at Mavericks games and at Rangers games when they do the anthem they're they're shouting stars like they do the game. What does it mean? And, and do you guys feel that? And yeah, yeah, I definitely feel it. There's great fans here. Um, you know, the the noise in in the arena has been, you know, second to none. Um, you know, the passion that's that's here. Uh, the guys that come to town, that the new guys that are here this year, they're like, man, we didn't realize Dallas was this big of a hockey city, and they show it in the playoff games. I mean, they show it during the regular season too, but playoff games are a whole other level, and um, it's definitely something that we build off of. Third row on the right. Hey, Ryan. Uh, I asked Joe this the other day. How 
unique is it to have teenage kids while you're playing at a high level and is does that make it even more special it does yeah um just i mean the they're into it as much as we are uh they, they can't wait to go to the games as soon as the times are announced they're excited because they're earlier and they can actually come so um and then just at school today was the dallas stars day so they all have their jerseys on wearing them to school so it's it's fun it's a family affair and um i'm sure it's that way with with joe and the other guys with kids and then secondly how often are you two at a hockey game at a youth hockey game and what kind of hockey dads are you yeah last night was there up in mckinney the night before was out in uh where were we valley ranch that day yeah so we, we get in from colorado on saturday we head right to the rink back left hey joe adam russell with spectrum who's texas all the way back here you probably know Wyatt as good as anybody on the team. What have you seen year one to year two throughout the season, this postseason, that's kind of just allowed him to keep on that trajectory? Well, I think year one, it was just getting his footing, you know, understanding the league a little bit, the living situation. The, you know, we, we talk, looking back, you're, you're wondering if he's going to hit a little bit of a wall at any point, but he just, you know, he commanded more ice time, more situational ice time. PP, PK, you know, and handled it. And this year, you know, coming back, it was, I guess, one of the biggest things is just the confidence that you see in him and the belief that he should be there and the want to be a, a difference maker. And, you know, you see those things. And on the flip side, nothing's changed personality-wise around the house. He, he's still, you know, a tremendous character at such a young age and uh, just a good person and fun to, fun to have around for sure. We'll take one more front left. Just facts. If you don't want to say it, fine. But names, spellings, ages of your kids. Do you mind uh, sharing that? I, I have four kids, and okay, yeah. one, two one, boys, two girls. Too long. Okay, yeah. You just yeah. leave it at that. I don't, it, that. You're putting me on the spot. No, I no, that's right. <laughs> well, that's why I said it. So if the answer is no, I understand. Yeah. Uh, was it like elementary school, middle school? That had uh, one, the oldest is 13, so I think he's in seventh grade. Right. And then like 11 year old, nine year old, and a six year old. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks a lot, guys. Uh, a lot of buzz around Wyatt right now, so I just wanted to go back to two stories we've talked about before. One, what was the process of moving down in the draft? Because you knew you were going to get him, and I think a lot of the credit goes to Joe McDonnell. And then two, what was the process of having uh, Wyatt live with Joe Pavelski? Yeah, well, actually, it was, it was in this rink here is where we scouted uh, Wyatt. It was the under-18s uh, World Championships took place here in Frisco during the COVID year. It was one of the few places we could skate at. So you guys are in the arena that uh, all the games were played pretty well that he played for Canada. Um, but the process was, you know, it, you know, you mentioned we, we moved down. You never know. But uh, Joe McDonnell uh, and his staff had a real good feel where they thought Wyatt was going to fall in the draft. Uh, you know, they, they did their homework. Uh, who are the other players available and stuff. And you just kind of, you get that feeling of where you think he might go. And, you know, considering it was a COVID year, he didn't, didn't, he played seven games that year. And so it's not like he was uh, a highly visible player. But uh, once again, Joe and his staff did a great job. And uh, uh, we're pretty confident that if we moved down to a certain spot, we'd still get him. And uh, we're fortunate we did. I got the extra, the pick that we used to pick Logan Stankoven with. So it worked out well. As far as uh, two years down the road, he went back, played in the OHL that year, and uh, had a great, he was the MVP of the OHL, had a great playoff there, and then we brought him in, and uh, you never know, is he going to be ready or not? You can you can say he is, but, uh, you know, I took, Pete and I talked, and we said, let's give him the nine games. It looks like he's doing well, and I still remember we, we made a trip, games, it was going to be, I think, games seven, eight, nine of our season that year. It was through Toronto, Montreal, and Boston, and... We knew that was going to be a pretty, you know, a, a kind of a sign, you know, how close is he or is he going to start falling off? First of all, he's going back home to Toronto. A lot of pressure, family, and playing in Toronto, his hometown. Montreal, you know, another Mecca hockey place. And then when the, the Montreal-Boston was a back-to-back. -back. And I remember talking to Pete and saying, you know, should it's a back-to-back -back and he's, he's a young guy, should we sit him out? And we decided not to. Uh, we're a little bit worried he's going to be going into Boston on a back-to-back, -back, playing against Bergeron Kretschia, their center iceman at the time. And uh, how is he going to hold up? I believe he scored that night and was one of our best players. And uh, I remember talking to Pete afterwards and saying, I think he's going to stay. And uh, when we made that decision to stay, we uh, decided, you know, he's, he's only 19 years old. 
uh, you know, been living in billets, never done his own cooking, laundry, paying bills, all that. So we started thinking, is it best that, uh, you know, let's, we talked about some teammates and is it best to ask some of the teammates to take him in? And uh, Joe Pavelski was the one name that came up, uh, him and his wife, Sarah, and uh, their son, Nate. And uh, we asked Joe, would he like to take him in? And he, right away, he said, yes, he's mine. I got him. And uh, here they are two years later, still living there. He's part of the family. It's been great for, great mentorship for Wyatt, but also I think it's been great for the Pavelski family. That's, uh, they've, you know, become great friends and uh, mentors to him and vice versa. He's, uh, him and Nate are playing street hockey all the time and uh, floor hockey and playing video games. So it's, it's been just been a great fit. And uh, as you guys have seen, he's been a great player for us. Front row on the left. Jim, your name is on the cup with Ken Hollins four times. So I have three questions. One, how did that experience prepare you for this? What's it mean to you to build your own team as a GM? And three, what do you think uh, the job Ken's done in Edmonton? Well, you know, Kenny and I go way back. We played junior together in Medicine Hat. He was 20 years old. I was 17. And he was, you know, uh, kind of took me under his wings a little bit. He was, a, he was our goalie. And uh, I was a young rookie coming in. So we built a relationship there. Uh, now we go our own ways playing pro hockey. He played down Adirondack. I end up coming to Detroit later on. Uh, he got into the management side. When I was finished playing in Detroit, Jimmy Devolano asked me to uh, get into the management side, and I did, and uh, I followed Kenny's path. He became one of my mentors. You know, him, uh, Kenny Holland, Jimmy Devolano, Scotty Bowman, I got to work under those men, and so th that meant so much uh, to me to be able to learn from some of the greatest minds in the game, uh, be part of that, and they may be part of you know, their wisdom and their knowledge. and. Uh, I eventually became, Kenny got promoted to uh, general manager. He promoted me to assistant general manager, and we were together for almost 20 years there. As you mentioned, uh, four names in our cup. Uh, we probably left three or four on the table. That's how competitive it is, but we had good, that good of teams. And uh, it just, I learned so much from from those three men, including Kenny. And uh, you know, our families are good uh, good friends. We know each other well and that. So means a lot uh, coming here and playing against him. And, uh, you know, a lot that I learned, I learned from those days. And uh, and it's not easy. It's uh, you think you're ready, but you're never ready till you are. And uh, but the things I learned from them was very important. And uh, now here he is. I uh, I remember him calling me when he had the opportunity. He, he stepped aside so Stevie could come in. And right away, he got a call from Edmonton. And uh, he called me late at night. He was over in Europe and said, Jim, what do you think? And we walked through it. And I gave him my words of wisdom. And uh, we talked, hashed through it. And uh, here he is. He's uh, now got them on the cusp, same place we are. And he's just done a great job in a high-pressure environment. And uh, uh, he's in the Hall of Fame for a reason. And uh, that's why we're here now. Front row center. Hey, Jim. When you look back to bringing in Pete, what was it about him that made you think that he could make an immediate impact in the way that he has here? I was fortunate to meet Pete way back in his junior days when he was, uh, you know, Windsor and then Kitchener winning the Memorial Cup and uh, watched his career along the way. You know, he went to Florida, uh, New Jersey, had some six success there. We actually hooked up in the World Championships 2013. 2015 and in 2015 in Prague won gold medal and uh, got to know him there even better uh, now he's a pro coach and saw his mentality and then watched his success in San Jose and Vegas and uh, you know his record speaks for itself you see what he's done how he's handled situations uh, you know it's what I told our players and our staff before the season started I go in every night knowing that we're all prepared we got a chance to win every night doesn't mean you're going to win every night but I know because of what Pete's put in place, we have a chance to win every night. And uh, that's a pretty good feeling when you're a general manager. Front left. Pete, uh, you got a bunch of veterans on your team, Ryan, uh, Joe, uh, Jamie, and Matt, guys of over 1,000 games. Ryan, Ryan's, I think, close to 1,500. What have they meant to this group? And how much of a rallying cry is it for these guys without a cup to, to get them over the, over the hump? <clears throat> well, what they meant to the group is, is everything. I mean, they, they set the culture for our dressing room. They set the culture for our work ethic. They set the culture for our messaging uh, to the room and to the players. Um, I, I don't think there's any doubt that our group recognizes that those guys are on the back nine and, and you know, uh, there's a lot of 
great players there that uh, that haven't won a cup, and I think our group knows that. Um, but what those guys have done is they they put uh, their money where their mouth is. I mean, they they've all taken less of a role. You know, they, they were all prominent players throughout their career. First power play, you know, in Suits' case, 25 minutes a night. In some of the, you know, in Pav's case, every situation, um, they've all taken less, you know, in order to let some of these young guys emerge and, and play bigger roles. And, uh, you know, that, that's been the key to our depth and our success. And Jim, I just want to go back to the to the 21 draft. And, and what was it like as a, as a manager where they felt like you had one hand tied behind your back, the scouts couldn't see guys in, in Ontario or in a lot of Canada up close? What, what was it like? I mean, and, and that decision to, to go with, with Wyatt eventually, like what was the process of just the entire draft process? Well, it was tough for the whole league. You know, you've got some leagues were playing, some weren't. Some people were playing in Europe, some weren't. Uh, so many unknowns. Uh, once again, but... Uh, a lot of the, you know, we all, the NHL, they, they all do a good job of drafting, and they cover underage players, and that's where this came into play was uh, you, you need to know something about the player as a 16-year-old or 17-year-old, and teams have done that, and uh, that's where I get back to. That's where our staff did a good job. They did a lot of digging. Uh, they found out a lot about the player, and uh, I still remember being a, it was a virtual draft that year because of, of COVID, and uh, talking to Joe before, I said, Joe, are you sure? Are you sure this is your guy you know because we're going off with limited information and uh, he was animate and his staff was that this is a guy and uh, they made the decision they made the right call front row on the right hey pete what stands out when you think back to your process of building a relationship here with jamie ben and what makes him unique and special as a captain well benner's an easy guy to build a relationship with um He's the same way with coaches as he is with with players in his room. You know, he's uh, he's the most humble guy in the room. Um, he's the quietest guy usually in the room he's in, um, but he's also very approachable, um, and and he he wears his heart on his sleeve. You know, they, there's never any doubt of what he's thinking uh, or where his motivations are. Um, just a beloved teammate you know, by the guys in the room. And I, I think as a coach, it's easy to get to know a guy like that. You know, he's an open book. There, there's no agenda there other than wanting to win. And that, and that was my first conversation with him. You know, I was coming in, sitting down a guy, uh, you know, who has won the scoring title, won an Olympic medal and, and asking him to play on a third line with a 19 year old rookie centerman and take three or four less minutes a night. And, you know, he, he didn't blink an eye. It was, uh, you know, if this helps us win, I'm all in. And so, you know, he'd love 20 of those guys. Go second row on the left. That's the, that's the, that's the second time you've mentioned veteran players kind of taking a step back to allow guys to come in there. I know it's not easy to strike that balance. So what goes into having your guys being able to step up to grab the piece that they need to grab, but also leaving enough space so that everyone gets to grab part of what you do? Yeah. No, it's a great question. I mean, that's the balance. I, I think you have to be at the point in your career where uh, it's the number one priority on your list uh, is winning a Stanley Cup. And I think, you know, we've got a group of veterans that, that are at that point in their career. It, it's not about personal accolades or about money or, or about uh, other things. So uh, you have to you have to get to that point first. And we've got a group that that is all there. And then, you know, and then the other piece of that is, you know, I obviously and and we as coaches have to make sure that that you know we still recognize how important those guys are situationally every night. You know, by putting them still in in important spots, even though they're taking a little bit less. And sorry, just one more before I move on. Joe Pavelski talked about you doing a really good job of building Stanley Cup habits into this team since the beginning of the year. What are some of the main Stanley Cup habits you think a team needs to have? Yeah. Well, you know, I, I just think not beating yourself. And, you know, how do you beat yourself in the playoffs? It's usually penalties. We're the least penalized team in the league and in the playoffs, the regular season and playoffs, or one, two. Uh, puck management, you know, that was something that, that uh, has been a work in progress all year. But, 
you know, we've got to the point where we found that line where, we, you know, we know when to try and make a play and when not to. Uh, playing with the lead and, and shutting down when you have that opportunity. You know, in a time right now where, where it's really tough to do that, you see leads blown all over the place left and right. So, you know, all those things have been a work in progress. Front row center. Hi, Pete. Uh, did Rupe and Yanni skate today, and what's Jake's status right now? Uh, Yanni did not skate. Rupe skated uh, pretty extensively before we got out there and looked good. And um, I would term him day to day. And uh, Jake got out early, stayed for most of practice, but was feeling a little under the weather, so he went off. No, no injuries. Just uh, you, and you think he'll be fine for tomorrow, Jake? Yeah, I yeah I don't I don't foresee any issues. No. Third row on the left, Pete uh, Wyatt scored twenty three of his uh, thirty two goals in the last in the second half of the, of the season. Uh, did anything change in the way he played, or was it just a, a matter of him learning and progressing? No, and I, I don't think anything changed. And actually, the, the impressive part of that was. Uh, just prior to Christmas, I think he went 18 games without a goal. And, you know, any anybody that scores uh, and is counted on to score, when you go that kind of a streak without scoring, uh, they usually wear it. They wear it around the rink every day. You know, they wear it at practice. They're getting down on themselves. The most impressive part for me was you, you never knew that he was in a slump, you know, every day he showed up and, and was still doing all the little things, still carried himself the same way, same attitude. Um, and, you know, our messaging to him was, and he was getting looks, you know, it was just, they're not going in, stick with it, stick with it. But, but he was unflappable during that time. So, so much maturity for a kid his age in that situation. And, uh, you know, and it turned for him down the second half but he wasn't doing anything differently you know he, if he you know other if you take that 18 game uh string out he probably scores 40. first row center hi jim um pete mentioned that a lot of the veterans set the culture and the tone in the locker room but when i've talked to the players throughout the year they always point back to you as the one that starts it that you're really the leader setting that culture in 2013, when you got here, is this kind of the culmination of your vision of that perennial contender, and is this the closest room you've had? You know, when you come in to an organization, you know, there's a reason there's some changes that are going to happen, and um, it takes time. And uh, we've been very fortunate. Uh, but I go back to it's uh, the players here have really grabbed it. You know, it's it's getting the right people in place, and. Uh, it doesn't matter whether you're in sports or what business you're in. It's about people and relationships. And uh, we've got good people in place right from the front office, the coaching staff, to the players. They've grabbed it. And it's uh, it's a culmination of all those things together that they've, you know, they, they've bought into it. They want to win. Uh, I love what Pete says. You know, we, in training camp we talked about this. It's about taking a little bit less to get more. And, uh, you know, we talked about the older players. When it's more important that two points in the standings and the two points you may get in the game, you know your team's in the right spot. And that's where we're at with this team. And uh, that, that goes back to our leadership. starts with the coaches, staff. Um, but this is this is what you envisioned. Yeah, you, wanna, you want your organization to get to a place where you get a chance to make the playoffs every year. You want to be in, in the mix. And it's not easy in this league. It's 32 teams, 16 make it, 16 don't. And that's, it's a tough league that way. And the parity is unbelievable. You know, you saw the teams at uh, 100 plus points and uh, teams with 90 points not making it. it. It is tough. It's a tough league. The parity's never been more. You look at the final four, they're all legit Stanley Cup worthy champion teams. And uh, it's great for the league, but that also to make those playoffs year after year, year after year, that's the most important part. And that, that's where I think our organization's got to now, which is important. Second row on the left. Hey, Pete. Um, you talked about staying out of the box, which is obviously important uh, going up against the Oilers. But when you do have to kill a penalty, what is what makes their power play so challenging? And what have you seen maybe from the last series with the Canucks? They, they went 11 in a row, killing off 11 straight penalties. Yeah. Um, well... What what makes sorry are you talking Edmonton's power play so dangerous. Edmonton's power play okay um, I thought you were talking eleven and zero I thought you were talking about Edmonton's penalty kill 
No, uh, the Canucks killed 11 straight penalties against the Oilers in the last series. Okay, all right. Um, you know, with well, the best penalty kill is stay out of the box. And, and again, like I told you, we, we don't take penalties. So, uh, and I don't anticipate that changing. Uh, you know, if you do, uh, there's no doubt they build momentum off that. And, you know, we have to make sure you're aware. We, we talked in our penalty kill meeting just about, you know, this this power play particularly because of the setup and the and the five guys and the fact that they play most of the two minutes um you know your, your detail in your entire group has to be bang on you know stick positioning assignments responsibilities uh bearing down on little things details you know clears face offs things like that so uh, Colorado had a great power play, you know, and uh, and we had to deal with that. I thought uh, Vegas actually had a really good power play, got a couple power play goals early. I think this one's probably at a little bit of a different level than those, but, you know, similar, similar mindsets. Anything else? Third row on the right. This is for both of you. Pete, you mentioned yesterday on the ticket that you had heard from Ken Hitchcock and many of the 99 cup winning stars either sending notes or being around and both for Jim and for Pete. What does that do to have that kind of continuity between a cup championship team and your current squad trying to do that? Well, I think anytime you win a cup, you know, there's a pedigree and an experience that goes with that. And, uh, you know, Ken was one of our coaches here. He, Ken Hitchcock did a great job of really instilling a lot of the things that we needed to put in place. We had a young team at the time. We hadn't made that next step. And a lot of the things that we're seeing now, he had a lot of input in that. And uh, so, like I said, he's he's been a Dallas star for a long time. He's in our Hall of Fame. And uh, I think he lives and breathes Dallas stars hockey. So it's great when you, you, you know, when you have a former coach connecting with our coaching staff and uh, sharing what he's watching in the games and everything else. And and as far as having the players around, it, it's great. You know, when you see uh, former players that have, uh, have won that cup and how they're excited for this next group of guys. You know, Jamie Benn played with some of these guys. Joe Pavelski's played and Suter. They've played against these these guys that have won cups. So it, it's a great connection that way. And uh, I think it just makes it exciting for everyone. Front left. Two quick ones. I want to make sure my memory and facts are right. You brought Joe McDonnell, Mark Leach from Detroit when you came here, right? Anybody else? Uh, correct. That, uh, yeah, that was it. Yeah. yeah. And McDonnell, obviously, big role in Wyatt Johnston. Any other players I should note that he had a big role in draft? Well, he's he's our he's my director of amateur scouting. So all the players, you see, majority of the players, uh, three quarters of them have been through his drafting and stuff in the staff. And there's other staff that were here before. Uh, Rickard Olmquist, Kari Taco, uh, you know, no, those guys, uh, that's the Rupi Hintzes and the S. Lindells. So we've got a great staff that have come together. Uh, some of them were here before I came here, did a great job. And, uh, and then they've joined forces uh, with Joe and uh, Mark and other staff. And uh, they've done a great job with all these players. You know, Logan Stan Covens, Liam Bischel, uh, Maverick Bork just won the uh, – HL scoring title and is the MVP of the HL and first all-star team. You know, what a, what a great year he's having. Uh, he's just turned 21, I believe. So we got some great young kids coming. And it's what excites me about our team right now is just the mix of players. We've got the older veterans. You know, we talk about the Pavelskis, the Suters, the Benz, the Sagans. We've got another core of guys, you know, the Jake Ottingers, uh, Rupe Hintz, you know, Jason Robertson. And then there's another group of guys that have come in, the Thomas Harleys, uh, you know, Logan Stanko and Wyatt Johnson. Uh, these guys have come in. So a real good mix in the room of uh, different, uh, I guess, eras of hockey. But they've really come together. And you know, the young guys bring energy. The old guys bring the wisdom. And some nights the old guys are bringing the energy and the young guys are pretending they got wisdom, trying to, to spread it around. So, But uh, it's a great mix, great dressing room. And... Uh, uh, with the the work the coaching staff has done, that's sort of one of the big reasons why we're here right now. All good. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. you guys have played some very good offensive players, and you I think your role defensively has been improved. What is it like when you're out there as a forward against guys like McKinnon and uh, everybody you're going to face? Yeah, um, you got to know when they're on the ace at all times. Uh, I think we've all done that. I think all, all the lines have that awareness um, as well as the defensemen. So just knowing when they're on the ice and 
managing the puck a little bit better and a little sharper and um, trying not to give him free offense. First row on the right. Hey, Jason. Uh, obviously, you guys would like to have a better home record in the playoffs. Anything that sticks out to why there's been more of a struggle at home, and do you take that personally? Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say that. I think, I don't know, I think on the road we're just a, on a better team. <laughs> I don't think it's anything about at home. I think, I don't know, on the road we just kind of just elevate our game most of the time because we go already go down the series. But, um, I mean, yeah, I think uh, – their approach doesn't change playing at home, but um, obviously we want to be sharp and try to try to take advantage of it. Um, and uh, we're going to have to start that tomorrow. First row on the left. Wyatt, you uh, had a different path here with the pandemic and not barely playing, well, barely playing in your in your draft year. What was that year like for you? They, did, did you go to the gym more? Like, were you, like, how, how did you stay sharp and, and what was your mindset? Yeah, it was, uh, I mean, it was a different year for everyone um you know being in toronto um obviously kind of maybe you know more of a hot spot so you know the gym wasn't always open you know ranks weren't always open so it was just you know finding finding any way i could to work on my game kind of whatever that was um you know working out in my garage when i needed to or um you know skating at outdoor rinks made a you know outdoor rink at you know the park near my house and in my backyard as well so um i mean just just finding finding different ways to train and um, I mean, that was just the mindset, just kind of, you know, doing what I could, just kind of getting ready for, you know, whenever the, you know, the next games I would play. And, um, yeah, just do, doing what I could to work on my game, kind of whatever that was. How hard was that? Because the, the light was so far at the end of the tunnel during that time for a lot of us. I mean, and it's an anxious time getting drafted. And like, not, like, what, what was it like? How were you feeling? How did you keep yourself sort of in check? It was tough. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, the biggest thing was, finding different ways to, to train. Um, you know, my gym was closed down for, for a while. So, um, you know, got some gym equipment. So I was able to work out in my garage and, um, I mean, it was just, you know, I think the biggest thing was just, you know, my love for the game, you know, always wanting to get better, keep working on my game and, um, you know, being out on those outdoor rinks, um, you know, you can spend a lot of time out there. And, um, I mean, it was just kind of, the biggest thing for me was um, just keep working on my game and getting ready to, you know, knowing that there was going to be a next game at some point. I didn't know when that was, but it was making sure I was going to be, you know, as good as I possibly could when that time came. Stay in the front left. Jason, um, it's been a minute since you guys have won the first game in a series. Uh, what do you think the trick is going to be for you guys to get that win against Edmonton tomorrow and then – how can you take that momentum in having your first lead in the series? Yeah, I mean, like you said, um, I haven't won a game one in my career. So um, it's it's been, I don't know, seven, eight series. But I thought uh, we had a chance last series to go up in game one. Um, we played really well and then obviously blew that. So definitely want to, I mean, keep that same approach as we did Colorado, get on a good start. Um, try to take the game over and not blow it away. So um, hopefully we get that done tomorrow against a, against a really good team. Third row on the right. Wyatt, is the whiskey had a 21st birthday present or a recent purchase now that you've entered that chapter of your life? <laughs> uh, I got it for Christmas from my sister. So a little bit, a little pre-21, but um, yeah, I don't know. It's a nice hat and I like it. So I've been, I've been wearing it, you know, ever since my sister got it for me. He was in Canada. Yeah. So yeah, it's on, uh, right for yeah. Christmas. So there you go. Yeah, he was in Canada for Christmas. It's so, Ontario. So there it was go. legal. Third row on the left. Wyatt, uh, you scored twenty-three of your thirty-two goals in the second half of the season. Uh, what maybe wasn't working in the first half, and what clicked in the second? Um, I don't know. I mean, um, I think you know throughout the season you wanna you know, keep building your game and, you know, keep improving throughout the season. And, um, yeah, I mean, I think just for me, it's, you know, working on the game kind of, you know, it's, I still haven't played that many NHL games. And, um, yeah, I mean, I think the first, first half of the season, you know, you're still kind of still learning. I mean, I'm still, still learning every day still, um, you know, still got a long ways to go in, in terms of just kind of, you know, learning about my game, learning about, you know, the kind of the NHL level and, 
Um, yeah, I mean, I think the biggest thing is just trying to trying to improve throughout the season. Um, you know, I've had a had a chance to play with some pretty special players, and um, you know, I think that's a, that's a big difference. And yeah, I think the biggest thing is just try to try to improve, keep keep adjusting throughout the season, and um, you know, keep working on your game. Second row on the right. Hey, Wyatt, Adam Russell with Spectrum News, Texas. Um, you know, obviously talking to your teammates, Pete, everybody's got a lot of confidence and a lot of trust in you. I mean, you're just turned 21. Why have you been able to, to earn that at such a young age? Um, I think um, you know, the biggest thing for me, I think, you know, I'm, in terms of the on ice is, um, you know, making sure I'm being a good two-way forward. Um, that's always been... That's always been a big part of my game is, um, you know, being being good on both ends of the ice, which I think, you know, I've, I've noticed is so crucial, especially at this level with, you know, if you're not, you know, taking care of, of both ends of the ice, you know, you're going to be able to, you're going to get burned, you know, pretty badly, especially when you're playing teams like Edmonton and Colorado with, you know, all the top players they have. Um, and then I think, you know, also the coaching staff have, have been awesome with me and, um, you know, allowing me to have that confidence to make plays and, um you know, not burying me, you know, for the rest of the game if I make a mistake or, or whatever it is. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, there's a number of things, obviously playing with some great players, which kind of allows me to, you know, use my use my skill set, make plays, and, um, yeah. Second row on the left. Uh, Wyatt, you, you know, you two guys, for sure you want to win a Stanley Cup, you young players, you want to win. The guys in Edmonton, they've been to a few couple of Western finals here. They think it's their time, it's their time to win. Can you probably drive? I assume you drive to the rink with Joe Pavelski. Uh, sometimes we kind of sometimes go go apart, but just okay. different schedules. But. And my point is this: Can anyone want to win the more the cup more than a guy who's played thirteen hundred games, or a suitor who's played fifteen hundred games, or Ben who's played eleven hundred games? Do you, as young guys, do you get that whole thing that they're what they're going through and how bad they want to win? Yeah, I think so. Um, I mean, you see. Joe's a great example of, um, you know, he's he's played in the NHL for so long. He's made the playoffs, you know, I think almost every year. Maybe I think he missed the playoff twice, um, you know, from what I remember. And, I mean, that shows how hard it is to win the Stanley Cup. He's been on some, you know, amazing teams throughout his career. He's been in the finals a couple times um, and, you know, just hasn't been able to get it done yet. Um, so I think that just kind of shows how hard it is and, um I mean, that also shows kind of how badly, I mean, you just, you see it, you know, with, you know, all the older guys, like you mentioned, like see it with Joe, see it with Ben or see it with Suits, see it with, you know, the guys who have, you know, played so many playoff series that just how bad, you know, they want to win. And, um, you know, you know, as a young guy, you want to win really badly, but you also want to win, win for them as well. Just kind of seeing, um, you know, their careers. And um, I mean, you want to win it for your teammates. That's, I think that's the most important part. We'll take one more first row on the right. Hey guys, for either of you, uh, besides the individual talent of going from Eichel to McKinnon to McDavid, what other similarities can you draw between the way Edmonton plays and what you're already prepared having faced Colorado and Vegas? Um, yeah, I mean, I think the first thing that you know stands out is um, just kind of the really high quality players that you know all those teams have played have had and. Um, yeah, obviously you got the, you know, McDavid, Dreisaitl, you know, two of the best players in the world. Um, and, you know, playing McKinnon and McCarr last series. I mean, there's all teams that have some, you know, amazing players. And, um, I mean, for us, it's, um, you got to play as a five-man unit, especially when you're playing against those guys. And it's, um, you know, defending them, not just, you know, those one-on-one -on -one battles, but it's defending as a, as a whole team. And, um, yeah, I mean, there's definitely, you know, every team's different. Um, but, you know, there's also similarities between between each team. And, um, you know, the one constant is, is us and, you know, what we do. And I think that's, you know, that's the most important part is making sure we're doing, you know, all the right things and doing the things that, you know, made it successful, you know, the whole year. Thanks, guys. Perfect.